Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Monte Carlo Fashion Limited Q1 FI23 conference call hosted by MK Global Financial Services. We have with us today Mr. Dinesh Gogna, Director, Mr. Sandeep Jain, Executive Director, Mr. Rishabh Oswal, Executive Director, Mr. R.K. Sharma, CFO, and Mr. Ankur Gaba, Company Secretary. As a reminder, all participant lines will be on in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end of the presentation today. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Jigisha Kapoor from MK Global Services. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome the management and thank them for this opportunity. I shall now hand over the call to the management for the opening remarks. Over to you, gentlemen. Yeah, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this earning call of Monte Carlo Fashions to discuss the financial and the operating performance for Q1 Financial 23. I would like to highlight that certain statements made or discussed over the conference call today will be a forward looking statement, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the result presentation shared with you earlier. Result documents are available on the company's website and also have been updated on the store exchanges. A transcript of this call could also be made available on the investor section over the company's website. And now let me share with you the financial and the operating performance for this quarter. The company reported, reported revenues of 113 crore during Q1 Financial 23 as against 42 crore in Q1 Financial 22, thus registering a growth of 171% year on year. This quarter has been the best ever Q1 throughout the entire existing of this company. Operating EBITDA for this quarter was 4 crore as against loss of 8.6 crore in Q1 Financial 22. Loss at PAT level, that level lower at rupees 3.9 crore as against 10 crore in Q1 Financial 22. Our balance sheet continues to remain robust and we continue to enjoy a net debt free status. We have a cash balance of 275 crore which comprises of cash and bank balances along with current and non-current investments. Long-term borrowing is 7.5 crore as of June 2022 as compared to 8.3 crore in March 22, which shows our efficacy in serving the debt. Monte Carlo continues, to, continues with this endeavor to build a leading branded apparel company with a well-diversified portfolio such as cotton, woolen, kilts, and home furnishing. Apart from cotton segment, we also produce different other garments. We also produce cotton and cotton branded t-shirts in economic category under the brand Clock & Decker. The ability to tap various segments of the market provides the company with tremendous opportunities for growth in coming years. The key strength is wide and growing distribution network with a diversified presence across India. The company's product reaches the end user through different distribution channels. The company has presence through 1,363 MBOs. 323 EBOs, 268 national chain stores. With regard to our online sales, we are looking to focus more on <coughs> selling through our own portal, but also our clothes are available on various e-commerce websites such as AGO, Amazon, Flipkart, Mintra, First Cry, Jabong, and Captions. Majority of our net revenues from the franchise, EBOs, and MBOs, where we primarily sell on pre-order or outright basis, by virtue of this business model, there is a no major inventory risk and we always remain insulated from the normal hazard sales in the branded apparel business. I would like to highlight that till date we have experienced almost zero bad debts in our business, which stands as a testimony to our strong business model based on zero credit risk policy for the company. At Monte Carlo, we are pledged to provide our customers with the finest clothing through product innovations, high quality, <coughs> and the launch of uh, new collections from time to time. Moreover, we continually work towards changing the look and feel of our stores to give our customers best-in-class experience. Setting up a new cloudy blanket manufacturing unit by subsidiary company Monte Carlo Home Textiles Limited. Monte Carlo Fashion Limited is entitled under the PLI scheme for manufacturing home textile products like rugs and mink blanket fabric. Post eligibility in the fourth set PLA scheme, the management conducted a feasibility study on the product profile, competitive landscape, and economic viability of the scenario above. The company's feasibility study concluded that 
the manufacturing of set products were not favorable even with the aid of PLA scheme. Thus, the board of directors concluded to undertake other projects which will be beneficial for the company and will also benefit our stakeholders. Now, under our subsidiary company, Monte Carlo Home Textile Limited, we are planning to set up a cloudy blanket manufacturing unit with a project cost of 80 crore approximately in Jammu and Kashmir, which will align with the overall growth strategy of the company. The benefit of setting up plants in GNKR, capital investment incentive, capital interest subvention, GST linked incentive, a low rate of electricity, and other tax exemptions. We are optimistic about our future growth and earning potential. We believe that we have a strong foundation for the future, which can provide us sustainable and the profitable growth for the longer term. While our focus will be to maximize revenue growth going forward, a large interest is to build profitability by maintaining cost control measures. With this, now we can open the floor for question and answer session. If you have any of you have any queries, post this earning call. You may also contact us at investors at Monte Carlo Corporate dot com or through Dickinson World, our investor relation advisors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Thank you. We take the first question from the line of Deepan Shankaran Narayanan from Thirst Line. Please go ahead, sir. Good morning, everyone, and uh, congratulations for a uh, good set of numbers. Uh, so, firstly, wanted to understand this uh, 80 crore investment we are talking about in home textile. So, will this capex be enough to replace our uh, current trading volumes in home textile business to manufacturing? And what kind of uh, margins improvement we can uh, foresee uh, from this our own manufacturing? Business? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Deepan. Uh, basically, in our home textile segment, it's not only the blanket uh, which we trade. We also do towels, uh, bed sheets, and quilts. So this plant is basically for uh, blanket manufacturing. Uh, we are putting up at JNK. Out of that, also there are some of the blankets which we cannot produce in this uh, unit. So some of that would keep on, uh, you know, outsourcing from China. And 70 to 75 percent of these blankets, uh, what we do right now, can be produced in this uh, blanket unit. And as far as Abita is concerned, uh, we have checked that uh, as far as the standalone unit is concerned, the Abita, uh, including the incentives, are in the range of 20-22%, which is in line with the uh, company strategy. And also, uh, when we start uh, producing blankets, it will definitely add in our profitability, because right now, the Abita of the blanket trading is around 14-15%. to 15%. So when we have higher habit in our manufacturing, that benefit will definitely come to the company. Okay, okay, sir. And uh, so what kind of assets have on this uh, 80 crore investment? Anand? Uh, what kind of revenues we can generate from this uh, 80 crores uh, investment? See, uh, if we see the standalone revenues from this unit should be in the range of 140 to 150 CR. But out of that, around 50% will be sourced in-house. So the additional revenue which the company will generate is around 70 to 75 CR. And this plant, uh, we hope that could be operational by second half of next fiscal. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, secondly, sir, how is the order book pipeline for uh, our uh, winter goods? Have we taken any price increase for uh, current season as well? See, the order book is quite strong. Uh, as you already mentioned in our earlier conference call also, we had a very strong trade show where we have very good order booking. And uh, another advantage we have is that a low level of uh, stock at the retail level. So we are very optimistic and hopeful for this year going ahead. So are we planning to increase our uh, uh, growth guidance for uh, full year? Right now, we are we stand by the growth guidance of 20 to 25 percent, which we gave earlier uh, in our last conference call. So, uh, if, if there is any any change in the guidance uh, during the course of the year, we'll definitely update it. 
Okay, okay. So lastly, from my side, uh, so last quarter we have said that uh, we are planning to add 20 to 25 new uh, stores every year. But I think uh, this quarter itself we have added some 11 stores. So are we planning to do aggressive expansion of stores? Yeah, we are not track to open around 30 stores this financial year, and I hope that we might even close this figure going forward in this financial year. Uh, okay, okay. Thanks a lot and all the best. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Vikas Kemani from Carnalian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi, Sandeep. Uh, uh, congratulations on good set of numbers, entire team. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think first time in the quarter, uh, Q1, you have reported a positive EBITDA, which I think is a very good sign of, you know, slowly uh, reducing the seasonality. I have, uh, you know, a couple of questions. One is that what happens to our earlier rug plant? Have we scrapped that or is there any update on that? Because last call you said that, you know, you, you're reviewing it. And of course, you have announced a new plant in Jammu and Kashmir for the blanket. But what happens to that plant? Is there any decision you made on that? Yeah, so decision is already, you know, taken in the board that uh, it's not lucrative enough to go with the rug manufacturing plant, seeing the global scenario and the overall EBITDA after making the detailed project report. So as of now, we have cancelled the RUX uh, manufacturing plant and now we are going ahead with the cloudy blanket manufacturing plant in DNK and which the company has made a detailed project report and which is definitely uh, a bit accurate to the company and also in line with the company's uh, blanket man, uh, existing blanket uh, marketing. Correct. But I think, see, given the size of our balance sheet and opportunity, you know, I think there were a lot of PLIs in one. Earlier, the investment size was far bigger than, you know, what we are currently doing it. So are there then any more projects of similar kind uh, on the drawing board which you are considering? Because, uh, you know, we have a reasonably good amount of cash. Opportunity is very big, uh, especially on the export front. Where, uh, so uh, are there any sort of projects on, on drawing board still? We, we are always in the lookout of good projects, which we have shared earlier also, that it should be having the same kind of capital level, what the company is may, you know, doing right now. In Monte Carlo, in uh, the blanket manufacturing unit, uh, when we made the detailed project report, so the capital level was coming at the same level, so it is not going to affect our EBITDA and will definitely add to the revenues. So we are thinking of actually going into two phases. In one first phase, we are putting up an investment of ATCR, for this first line, and uh, if everything goes well, then there is a second line which will come up in the same area because we are taking the land uh, according to three lines. So second capex, uh, we also expect a 70 crore which will follow once uh, the first line is commissioned, and uh, it's in as per the expected lines. So I think the company is always open for uh, future investments in the areas where it, it can have a good appetite, which is in the line of the company, and also uh, company is open for higher dividends and uh, buybacks in the future. And this project is also this project is also only for domestic or, or replacing our demand? Because our demand will, you know, may not, I'm sorry, is that export element out there as well? See, most of, most of it will go into the domestic uh, uh, market because the benefits which we, which we get uh, by putting up this plan in JNK is GST, SGST and CGST, where we get the refund of all the duties, whatever we pay. So the most of the products will go into the domestic market market also, but I cannot rule out even small percentage can be done can be done for the export source. Vikas, one thing this is Gogna here. Hello, sir. Yes, hello. How are you? I'm good, good, sir. <laughs> yeah, in fact, like you know, this is basically part of it is for the captive use also. We we can say so. Because, you know, we have been trading, we have been giving the textile trading in our results, like, you know, you must have noticed this. Yes. And textile trading includes trading in blankets. And hitherto, we have been importing all the blankets from China and only some portion of the this year, like, you know, we have taken the uh, blankets from Panipat and other places because of some problem with China. So now when this unit is put up, Basically, like, you know, some portion of that will be sold to Monte Carlo, main unit, I mean, a holding company. And from there, they will, I mean, do as usually, like, you know, they used to do earlier as a trading in that. And that will certainly increase our avidya margin in Monte Carlo also. Sure, sure. And secondly, like, you know, so far the expansion process is concerned, 
as I mean, Mr. Jain has already explained to you okay, that this is a beginning. Now, to begin with, you know, we can we are very careful, like you know, and we have been always going ahead with the expansion, which actually earns company a profitable growth. That is the reason, like you know, to begin with, we are going ahead with the 80 crores of these uh, total project, and thereafter this project will go to 150 crores, and we will not stop there. If we find good opportunity, we will go further ahead. Sure, I think that that's good. And one more, sir, only suggestion or observation rather than any question. I think, you know, while we are expanding, you know, about 20, 25 odd stores, uh, and I guess this quarter you've done very well. But given the fact that we are a very category, you know, leader, and there is no other, any meaningful brand, you know, which is there to compete with us, I thought probably, and right now, demand environment across the board is very, very strong. So using this opportunity to scale up the growth slightly faster would be a great idea, according to me. Of course, you know, I know that you guys are conservative and uh, generally, you know, you follow a very conservative policy. But I think environment right now is there with unorganized organization is happening and our brand, as you recall, capturing the, you know, white space would be, you know, a great uh, sort of idea. That's my observation. But uh, any comment on that? I mean, I think because we're in line with what you're saying, uh, as you know that the company has grown 45% last financial year. So on the larger base, we are projecting a growth of 20 to 25%. That shows our aggressive nature as compared to last few years, where we were growing at 10 to 15%. So I think we are in line with what you're saying, and definitely we noted your points also. Great, Sandeep. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Naresh Kataria from Money Curves Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, congratulations. My question is on the long-term growth. Uh, so very, very nice to know that you are reiterating this 20-25% uh, growth this year. And I'm, I'm hoping that this growth momentum continues. I'm keen to know what's changed structurally to give us this growth uh, confidence. Because our last five years it's more like 10 12 percent KGR. Of course, we had COVID. Uh, but is it just that we have reached a scale where we are able to grow, or is it the previous years focus on? Uh, if I clearly understood your question, uh, you wanted to ask that how we are very confident of achieving the growth exactly. of 2025 exactly. going forward. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. See, see, see. What happens is that so we have uh, different areas in Monte Carlo. Mm -hmm. We have uh, are, are basically in our distribution channel also. We have four basically different channels, which is a large format stores, then SIS, which is shop and shop, then EBOs and MBOs. So you know it takes time when you like uh, consolidate all the areas as, as well as when they start complementing each other rather than competing with each other. So we were doing a lot of exercise in last few years so that uh, all these channels complement each other. And also, uh, we are keeping a strategy of almost having the same price at all the levels. So that is helping the company to grow and giving the confidence among the retailers and the consumers uh, as far as when they go to any other any channels. So I think uh, uh, besides that, we have been doing well in our uh, economy range, Clock & Decker. We are doing well in our... Uh, a blanket section, which is a home textile section, and our rocket uh, brand is also picking up in this financial year. So I think all these uh, things which company was was doing, uh, you know, efforts on last three four years is actually giving us the fruits, and that is why we are confident of giving this growth. Perfect, good to know. And uh, of course, you mentioned in last call and interview also on, and we were on this call on the winter visibility being So what what you know, winter is still away. Uh, what, what gives us the confidence that winter will work out to be good? Is it the economy is opened or is it our retailers and MBOs and EBOs are telling that inquiries are good? Or what, what's, the, what's the monitor data over here? Okay. See, basically, uh, when, we, when we say that our winter should be good, it depends on our order book. So in the recently conducted trade show, we have got a very strong order book. Now, the second benefit which we get in this financial is a low inventory at the retail level and also at our MBO level. So that gives us another confidence that when the inventory is low, the order book is strong, economy is doing well as far as India is concerned. I don't see any issues as far as any any forthcoming recession is concerned. So we are very confident that if economy is performing, so definitely all the brands, including us, will definitely perform. Perfect. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
We take the next question from the line of Nikhil Jain from Galaxy International. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions. First was about uh, just uh, reconfirming that uh, the new plan that you are setting up in J. So that uh, that is primarily for domestic, and uh, we would be using it uh, for uh, under the Monte Carlo brand, right? So the um, so the product that will be out uh, from the the blankets and all, they will be under the Monte Carlo brand, right? Uh, basically, if we do our current business and the kind of capacity we are putting up in JNK, as of now, I think we should be able to use around 50 to 60 percent of the capacity of that particular unit, and rest I think we can sell in the open market in blankets. So that is how we perceive. All right. Okay. And as the requirement grows, then you go ahead with phase two of expansion as you as you suggested, right? Pardon? As the as the, as the demand grows. Can be increased because we have been growing in 30 to 35 percent per year in our uh, blankets and home textiles. So going forward, we think that the demand will keep on rising, and definitely the outsourcing will be more from our blanket unit. Rather and than expansion from. would also be there. And we are planning expansion also uh, in the second phase. Once this 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 is a, this starts uh, in the second half of this next phase. Okay, great. Uh, my second question is with respect to this uh, quarter. So, as compared to the last year, uh, first quarter, right? The, our top line has uh, tripled, right? So, almost like some 40 odd crores to 120 odd crores is a great achievement on the EBITDA side also. So, we are now positive. But I'm just trying to understand what would make us net positive on this uh, particular uh, quarter. Right? So, because our sales have grown three times, but it's still uh, on the net profit side, our uh, uh, we are not positive. So, what what is it that uh, that actually will make us positive? So, is the is the product mix different, uh, which we actually sold in this quarter, which is having less margins uh, as compared to let's say our regular products and all? See, uh, basically, this is historically a weak quarter for us. And the reason for this weak weak quarter, as far as bad is concerned, the biggest thing is that because. We start manufacturing of our sweaters, jackets, and other winter goods in the month of February, March itself. So all the production expense in making those garments are actually in this quarter. But the products get sold only in the second and third quarter. So that is why there are uh, we showing some loss in this quarter. But otherwise, if you see that the, all the manufacturing expense when we enter in this quarter, if we if we don't you know take take note of uh, rather than we book it when we sell it. Then it can turn into profit also. So that is a basically a reason why we're showing loss in this quarter. Oh, thank you, thank you. And uh, just a last question. So the the eleven stores so that we have opened. So can you just uh, 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 let's say advise uh, which uh, which zones or which which states have you opened these states in? Um, these stores in? Your voice is not clear. Can you please repeat it? So I was saying that uh, the stores that we have opened, eleven stores in this quarter. So are those which states are those stores in uh, open in? Yeah, uh, the two were open in southern state, which is one is in Bangalore and one is in Hyderabad, and rest one is open in the eastern region. Then balance are open in the northern and central region. Right. And can you also highlight what is your strategy for expansion? Let's say because the winter, if we say privately, we are selling the winter year, so we have a very strong brand on the winter year side. So are we let's say looking to open it more on the uh, states where the winters are much uh, much stronger as compared to let's say other states where winters may not be so so um, so heavy. So we are opening Pan India as I said just now that we have opened in Hyderabad also we have opened in Bangalore also, but we are making a very conscious movement to these states as uh, as in when we get a good location and a good good rentals. And definitely, you know, because being a tropical country, we know that there are nine months of summer, and in those states where we have very less winters, we have to be present only because of summer wear products. So that is why we are making roads in uh, southern states and western states. And I'm uh, I'm glad to say that we have been growing in those states also. If, if we just compare the first quarter number of southern states, last year the sale was two crore in southern and others. It is 8.9 crore in this financial year. And in case of West also, it grew from uh, 0.24 to 3.78. So there has been a growth in uh, Western and uh, Southern state also, and also a plan of opening retail outlet in these states going forward. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks. That's all for me. Thank you, sir.
we take the next question from the line of zaki nasir from retail investor please go ahead sir hello hello can you hear me yes yes we can hear you anil bhai namaskar uh, congratulations on a phenomenal first quarter as you had promised last year uh, and thanks for opening a place in hyderabad we will be looking for it for a long time uh sandeep bhai now my question number 1 is regarding um, uh, raw material prices uh cotton and yarn has been uh, pretty volatile so how how does this affect you sir does it affect your uh, uh product pricing in in the season sir uh number number 2 is uh, uh this year more or less you have given a, a growth guidance of 20% sir uh do you think a year after that you will be able to maintain that momentum or it will get back to more of a normalized growth thank you sir yeah thank you see as far as raw material prices are concerned see see we remain uh, we make our sales insulated whenever whenever we go for a trade show we normally cover all our raw material depending upon the availability and depending upon the uh, like order book we expect so uh, i i don't think any 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 variation in the raw material price going forward after the trade show would affect us because already we have covered the material whichever we require for the uh, winter products but going forward now you see that the uh, cotton prices are coming down so going forward we see that the amid doesn't come down you know once we uh, once we fix it in the uh, last season also and this season also we don't see that the mrp goes down so if the mrp doesn't go down and the there is a reduction in the raw material prices definitely it benefits the company going forward in the summer wear for and as far as growth guidance is concerned see, uh, even though last year we grew at 45% and we gave a very strong guidance of 20 to 25% and we are very optimistic about the economy of uh, uh, this country as we see that if there have been many steps taken by the government which is pushing this economy to grow at 7.5% in this fiscal and as per the rbi report uh, going forward also we don't we don't see any recession which is coming to india and the economy should remain strong going forward so we don't see any any problems or any issues that we should continue growth going forward also thank you sir and if i might just um, ask one more thing sir uh, in regard to your digital uh, marketing what's what is the share of your sale on the on the online networks right now and how do you how do you plan to uh, how do you plan to push this up going forward sir i would request mr rishab to uh, answer this question so hi good afternoon so uh, currently uh, around 4% of our sales have come from online channels uh this is less as there were some supply constraints from our side uh, towards supply to the online channel and our website is undergoing maintenance in this quarter but we are confident of making it up in the coming uh, quarter of this financial year so at the end of the financial year we'll be uh, in a growth mode in online as well yes sir sir but uh, let's say 2025 what is your aspiration uh, for this figure sir 4% would become 78% in 25 So, so our target is seven to eight percent of our overall sales will come from online channels. Going forward, fantastic, fantastic, the best wishes. Then maybe in ten. Right, in this period. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Ria from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead, ma'am. Hello. Uh, thank you for providing me an opportunity. Uh, congratulations on a good June quarter comparatively. You can Papa go push for urgent. I can't even call them. hello yeah yeah please please continue uh, yeah uh, so my first question would be like since we are expecting this kind of growth in online presence as well as you know yeah or oh, we have a lineup for new stores to be opened what kind of brand and uh, marketing expense do we see coming forward like are we going to invest in that or how is the outlook so uh, see as far as monte carlo brand is concerned um, i think the brand recognition and brand pull is good enough that we can maintain our advertisement spend at 2 to 3% of our turnover and that is what we are spending currently and that is uh, our guidance going forward however there is a shift between the composition of uh, the spend that we do so we are shifting more from offline towards online ad spend however the total ad spend will uh, remain at 2 to 3% so we are focusing more on digital advertisements and performance based advertisement uh, when it comes to this point 
Okay, because I think for uh, increasing penetration in online channels, you will need a uh, much more brand presence because in other parts of the country, it's less prevalent. Oh, my yeah, second question would be. Sorry. It can cross three yeah, percent. It can cross three percent, but overall, uh, it will overall it will be at the same level. But obviously, we can uh, increase our exposure towards southern states and western states when it comes to digital advertisement. Yes. But as you know, that the uh, revenue is almost growing uh, from nine hundred to eleven hundred crore. So even that three percent becomes thirty crore, you know, as compared to twenty crore in this financial year. Yeah, the quantitative, quantitative. Yeah. So the value, you know, that value will rise. Value will rise. Right. Right, right. And in terms of cover network, do you want to give any guidance for the current year? How many stores you want to open up, and uh, what kind of sales from each store do we look forward to? We have given a guidance of 30 stores to open up in this financial year, and normally we see that a thousand square feet store should do a sale of around 1.2 CR. Okay. And all these uh, 30 stores will be more than thousand square feet. I'm assuming. Pardon? More than all the 30 stores. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. More than thousand square feet. Sometimes we get a, a, you know lesser area also depending upon the location when it is not available. But mostly it is uh, around thousand and more than thousand square feet. Uh, also, now coming from a broader outlook, in some demand point of view, uh, could you uh, give me a sense of how is the demand? Because I was uh, recently reading about some articles where the demand is going down. So demand uh, region wise as well as product wise, your wooden apple is caught in. Uh, see, uh, we are very glad to say that we are not seeing any any downfall in the demand as far as any growth is concerned. We are having a, uh, a very strong demand coming from the retail uh, outlet also, and also our other channels like our MBO SIS and uh, LFS channel. We have seen a very strong demand coming up, and uh, we don't see any fall in the demand in the near future. Okay, this is for both north region as well as south regions, right? Yes, in both the regions. Okay, and what percentage of our products is not booked for, uh, like the order book? And can you give me a timeline? How much, how, how many months before the order book is placed, and what is the exact procedure? Like, uh, if I may ask, we we do a trade show almost six to seven months in advance. So, like for winter, we do a trade show in the month of March, and then we start producing our goods. And the goods goes normally uh, after five months. Like it starts dispatching in August. And it ends in October, uh, basically, uh, 90% of the goods. And then again in summer, we do a trade show uh, around August and September. And the dispatches start in uh, January, February. And it ends in April. Okay. Okay. And uh, what percentage of our products are non-order book uh, oriented? No, 100%. that is very small. You know, there are some repeats which comes once uh, the order order goes into the retail stores, but that percentage is not that much. So mostly uh, we produce on the order-based goods only. But there are some corporate inquiries uh, which is uh, you know comes as and when it is uh, demand for that. So that is separate from the uh, normal trade normal trade business. Okay. Okay, I think that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. We take the next question from the line of Sachin Kasera from Swan Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir, and congrats for a good set of numbers. I had a few questions. One, if you could tell us uh, what is our currently mix of revenue between economy, mid, and luxury segment, and what is the type of gross margin difference that we enjoy there between the three segments? See, we have only a clock and decker brand, which is an economy segment. The rest, everything is uh, you know upper premium only, and the clock and decker revenue is basically uh, if I talk about the overall revenue of the company, it should be around five to six percent of the turnover, not more than that. Otherwise, everything is upper premium only. And the gross margins uh, at, at both the brands are, uh, in, in Monte Carlo, it is a little higher. In Clock & Decker, it is a little lower, uh, 100 basis point. Sure. Uh, so if you could tell us a little bit uh, about your initiative that you're trying to do in terms of uh, uh, X of Monte Carlo, which is primarily your winter wear segment. In the cotton segment, what we are trying to do to improve the realization or you know move up the chain in terms of the presence? 
quarter one realization is even more than uh, the winter realizations. So at PBT level, we are having the more PBT at quarter one uh, segment rather than in the winter year segment. So uh, you mentioned that you know uh, we are trying to increase the uh, quarter non quarter mix in favor of quarter. You also mentioned that you are planning to have an expansion of uh, you know uh, footprint more into west and southern region where it is more of cotton base. So does it mean that going forward as the share of this cotton keeps increasing, overall EBITDA margin should increase in that case? Because you mentioned that margins in cotton are higher than. Uh, Yes, I think the cotton segment is growing faster than the uh, woolen wear segment and winter segment. Being a tropical country and the cotton products are sold nine months in a year, so definitely it has uh, more growth rate as compared to winter wear products. And going forward, <coughs> we think that as overheads are also becoming less, you know, when you increase your turnover, definitely it should help us in increasing our margins going forward. But it also depends on the economy and kind of discounts and U.S. sales of other brands. But we are uh, very positive of sustaining our margin, which are current margin of 80 to 20 percent of EBITDA. That's fair. So that's something that we've been maintaining. But my sense was that the type of growth we are talking and the way we are talking of increasing mix of cotton should be from a two to three perspective aspire to be the range to move to like 22 to 24 percent from 1820 that we are there today. Uh, I, I can't say uh, you know at this moment that we can increase our EBITDA to 20 to 24 percent, but. What we can say with confidence is that we will be able to sustain our margins what we are increasing right now. What, we are doing right now. what is the difference in margin between this cotton and non-cotton? If you could tell us, at least that would help us model once how the share of cotton moving will help in terms of the margins. It's almost at, at PPT level, I would say that it is around 1500 basis point more than the uh, non-winter sector. That's how much, sir? Sorry? 1500 basis point more than the non-winter sector. Winter sure. segment, sorry. Sure. Yeah. Secondly, sir, uh, on the capital allocation policy and how do we look at the company? So, from what I understand, we primarily be uh, more of a branded and uh, retail apparel company. Now we announced this uh, manufacturing thing. So, is it that uh, most of the manufacturing that we will plan to allocate would primarily be mainly based on addition if we have it as for a captive, like for example, this new plant that you mentioned, 50 percent will be captive and the rest will be non captive. So, how do we look at in terms of allocation of your fund for manufacturing? Would always be primarily driven by the fact that a large portion should be capital consumption, or we may look at independent manufacturing uh, opportunities also, where there may not be any synergies with our retailing. See, if I have clearly understand the question, you wanted to like you wanted to ask that how much we are doing captive and how much we are doing uh, outsourcing. No. No, sir. My question is that going forward, when we have to allocate any large capex for any manufacturing plant, will it be mainly for segments where we have a good portion of capital consumption, or is manufacturing also an independent, profitable? Uh, you know, uh, so for example, you may look at an opportunity where the IR is good, and we may have to invest two hundred crores, but need not have any capital consumption. We will also, we'll also able to do the opportunity. So, how should we look at the company? Is it that it's more of a branded retail lateral company or it's a manufacturing company? Retail how, how do you do that? See, we will do captive only where we think that there are some roadblocks for you know outsourcing. Like in sweaters, it's a very complex process. Mm -hmm. So we have completely 100% uh, captive uh, like uh, production. But in case of blankets, again, there are bottlenecks from importing from China and a lot of variations in the dollars and also the freight. And also when sourcing from other areas, so we are putting up a JNK, this uh, blanket manufacturing plant. But as far as T-shirts, shirts, and trousers are concerned, so it's not that margin creative uh, as as we see that it's not it's not like in our case uh, we're going to put up more of captive uh, production in case of shirts, trousers, and T-shirts, as the margins in this is not that much as we compare to blankets and and these sweaters. So we don't see much capex coming up in uh, t-shirts or in shirts and trousers and denims. But yes, uh, if there is any demand for sweaters, we might do some capex in that. Okay. So majority of the manufacturing capex will be primarily the main purpose would be for capital consumption. It's not like, you know, for example, uh, some of these players that we have like Indo account or Wealth Fund, which primarily do a example uh, so, home textile. Yeah. So to yeah. answer your question, going forward, even if we invest in more uh, capex, it will be primarily we will be focusing for our capital consumption where we already have a presence. So like blankets, we already have a presence and 50% of the production will be uh, consumed by our brand itself. 
So going forward, we would prefer uh, putting up manufacturing uh, for products where we already have our uh, brand presence. Sure. And that brings can to I, the last can question. I, can, I, can I say something, dear friend? Like, you know, so far, my both the colleagues, they have said so. Okay, so far, the captive, so far, the captive consumption is concerned. We are the people, like, you know, we are two categories. One is the cotton and other is the uh, woolen. So far, the woolen is concerned, like, you know, we have got the all manufacturing facilities available with us. In case they, there is an increase in demand of the woolen, then in that case, the balancing machine and other things we will install. But that will not be for captive consumption. That will be only to beat out the demand of the market. And so far, the cotton is concerned, we are normally outsourcing because that is more profitable for us. So expansion in our area would be only as per the market demand of our product. Yeah, it is not that, uh, like, you know, in-house consumption means that to increase our sales and other things. It is not something like, you know, that, that byproduct, that product will be used for making any production in our own house or something. Sure. And then lastly, sir, on the uh, payout and the capital allocation again. So in that case, are we looking at a further, because I think we have a lot of cash and that would mean that there may not be more than like 80, 100 crores capex a year. Would we look in terms of further increase in terms of uh, return to shareholders either by dividend or buyback from what we've been doing last four, five years? Yes, we have, I have already said the same thing that he, uh, we're going for some capex uh, for the plant and definitely when board decides it can increase the dividend so it can go for buyback also in the future to utilize the cash which is available on the books. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Viraj Pare from Kalinian. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, congratulations, sir, on a great set of numbers. I just have one question uh, on the growth front. I mean, we have grown as you said, 170% on a year-on-year -year basis and close to 88% on pre-COVID levels. So last year, on an annual basis, we would taken close to 18-20% to 20 uh, price hike and the market had absorbed that price hike and helped us to sustain our margins. So could you provide me with a breakup for uh, pre-COVID volume growth? How much have we grown on pre-COVID levels on volume? And how much has it been on price hikes, if you, could, if you have that number handy? Uh, we need to check that uh, pre-COVID level sales are actually I'm not having right now. Uh, yeah, we have we have the pre-COVID sales which, which is with us. If we compare uh, the T-shirt sales of pre-COVID, it was around 17 lakh 68 thousand pieces in quantity, and which we did uh, in the March 22. So the total volume which we did in uh, pre-COVID level in Martin, it was 47 lakh 60 thousand in quarter segment, which has grown to 57.67 lakh uh, in March 22, full year. All right, all right. Yeah. And so what would be the number as on uh, FI22, Q1 FI22 based on that? Uh, in Q1 uh, Financial 22, uh, I just shared you some of the uh, the volumes which we did in last quarter was it was 7 lakh 40 thousand and in this financial it is 11 lakh 43 thousand. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, all the best for going ahead. Great set of numbers. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Anil Jain from Equipassion Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, congratulations and uh, for the great first quarter in the company's history. First time in the company's history, we have a bit of positive in the first quarter. Uh, I just wanted to know if you open a store, what is your experience or historical uh, experience? the store become a bit of positive in how much time at the store level can you please repeat it yeah i just wanted to know from your past experience when you open a store how much time it takes to uh, become a uh, the store a bit of positive two to three years two to three years and uh, 
how much time it takes to come at the company level abita no no see you cannot compare the store level abita with company level abita because we have normally franchises which which do the stores so in, in their okay. case see, we see we see that roi is around 16 to 18% or sometimes 20% on their investment okay. income. but okay. but in case of but in case of company owned store see, we only open the store in a areas where we don't find franchise or where the rentals are very high so in okay. case, it's mostly for brand presence and brand awareness it's not for like uh, you know for increasing the profits in those areas okay so you mean to say it takes 3 years to reach company level abita approximately the company level abita the company level abita see you know there is no comparison in that because most of the stores are owned by the franchises we just okay. you know primarily we uh, sell them outrightly okay okay so immediately the franchisee don't share their balance sheet with us that how much they are basically okay so you have you have become abita positive from first first first, first day Yes, yes, because we are selling. Okay. So as far as you are selling, you see our sale, which is live at our end. Okay, okay, got it. That's all from my side. Yeah. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Shakti Somalia from S E Associates. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Hi, good morning, and congratulations for your result. I have one small question. Uh, so my question is, how does our sports brand, uh, sportswear brand, Vox is performing? Can you uh, put some light on it? So, uh, so the brand Rocket was launched one year before the COVID season, and once COVID hit, we took a conscious decision to make it online only. In the past two years, we sold it only online. But going uh, forward from next financial year, we are having we are building up a completely independent team for Rocket uh, with the independent design team, independent marketing team. So we foresee from the next uh, financial year, you will see good numbers in Rocket. And like uh, when you're saying that uh, it was available only online, so how it performed online, and how, what is your expectation when you are going ahead with, you know, uh, the, in the main market? So what is your expectation for that? So, uh, so online the response was good. There was some feedback that we got from the customers related to pricing and discounting policies, which we incorporated. And now I think majority of sales for this brand will be coming from offline channel, which is much more profitable for us as well. So we've got good learnings from our online sale, and now we're focusing on the uh, on implementing these changes in the offline segment. Okay, and when when you're putting it from online to offline, are we doing any specific or any you know major modification or amendment in the strategy or design or something, or it is uh, it's going to go in the same way? So there will be uh, 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 almost a 360 degree change in the in terms of what the product we are making, the pricing strategy, and the packaging that we are using to promote it. Also, in terms of our advertisement efforts towards the brand, the exposure and expenditure towards the brand will increase as it goes offline. And uh, so we are right now in the process of making an independent distribution channel for this brand, which is independent from the distribution channel of Monte Carlo or Clock and Decker or our textile segment. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. We take the next follow-up question from the line of Ria from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Hello? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, my question was in regards to uh, what percentage of our raw material uh, do we import or outsource? See, uh, we don't we don't import much of our uh, requirement as far as woolen yarns are concerned. It's our sister company where we procure our woolen yarn, and cotton yarn is actually available. Cotton fabric is actually available in India, and through we buy from various uh, companies who make cotton fabrics and uh, cotton garments. And there's yes, there are some blankets which we import from China, and yes, there are some uh, fabric specialty fabrics which are not available in India. We import from China and some other countries. So what percentage would that be? Uh, and I think in blankets, it is approximately around 15 to 20% if I see the total turnover of the uh, home textile segment. And in case of uh, jackets, uh, approximately 30 to 35% of the fabrics comes from uh, overseas. Okay. Are we seeing any issues right now with China uh, shutting down or something? 
no we are not much depend on dependent on the you know uh, overseas uh, fabrics it's the percentage is very small but yes there are some delays uh, as china has zero covid policy so some of the areas get closed in last two months but i think now it is normal so we don't expect any delays as far as our procurement is concerned okay uh, did we have any impact of the delay in this quarter by any chance no 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 we will not have any impact on any uh, in, in this quarter or going forward also okay okay and uh, for the current uh, fi 23 could you give us a break up of what kind of uh, segmental do we see from woolen and cotton like the break up if any we can give you last year's break up this year yeah uh, i i have the last year's break up uh, what kind of like i was asking for guidance actually okay. it, it will be almost same you know There, there might be some more cotton uh, garments added to it. Otherwise, it will remain same. Almost. Okay. Ah, uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. A reminder to all the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Sachin Kasera from Swan Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, you shared the uh, volume number for cotton segment as per 19 OC as per 22. Can you also just share the same for the woolen segment? No, it's it's almost stable prices are stable, so I don't see any confusion in the prices. And as far as uh, our margins are concerned, I think it will be sustaining our margins of last year also in woolen terms. No, no. My question is the uh, volume in the woolen segment of for FY 22 versus FY 19. Yes, it will. It will definitely grow double digit in this financial year. Fy nineteen versus twenty. Nineteen. It was thirteen lakh uh, in case of uh, financial nineteen last year, and it was fifteen lakh in case of March twenty two uh, last year. Sure. Uh, so next thing is, uh, if I see your presentation, the share of kids in home textile has grown from fifteen percent to almost twenty three, twenty four percent in the last three years. So can you just tell us what is the reason for this uh, sharp uh, increase in share of kids in home textile? Why are they growing so fast? Is there a special focus you are putting there? Yeah, I think uh, there is less competition on textile segment, which is helping it to grow uh, more than the complete growth rate. As we have been last year, we grew at 50%. This year, we anticipate a growth of around uh, 30 to 35%. So. Because of less competition in the segment, home textile segment is growing faster than the other segment. And similarly in the kids, as not many brands are present in the kids segment, so that is why it is having a less competition from other brands, and the growth is faster as compared to the uh, overall brand. So that and is why the share has increased. And the margin in home and kids is in line with company average, or is higher or lower? Thing? The kids margins are lesser as compared to uh, parent brand because in kids garments. you don't get that much price as you get in uh, men's and women's wardrobe and in case of home textile segment also the margins are lesser than the uh, parent brand mondega sure uh, garments yeah and can you give us some sense on the market share trends for our brand uh, last uh, to see how the market share has moved if if you have any data on that see we don't have an exact data because it's a unorganized market but we see that in premium section in mondega and sweaters Uh, we control approximately more than i think 50% share in the premium segment as we don't see other brands which are competing with us in that price range but it is very difficult to estimate the exact market share of uh, you know our brand in the indian apparel section because not not most of the companies are listed and there is a lot of unorganized players which are available so very difficult to quantify the exact market share of monte carlo sure sure thank you Thank you. We we'll take the next question from the line of Deepak Mehta, individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity and great set of numbers. So I want to ask about the, you know, the breakup of oh, right now. Traditionally, you know, Monte Carlo is known for the woolen wear. So right now, what is the mix of woolen and you can say t-shirt and non-woolen kind of stuff? I can hear the last year's figure, the year which gone by. In that case, uh, the sweater contribution was 151 crore, and the cotton contribution, including jackets and uh, other garments, were around 576 crore. 
and in case of textile it was sorry it is 489 crore uh, 489 crore in case of cotton uh, section which includes jackets also and in case of textile it was 127 crore and in case of uh, kids uh, cotton cotton were 58.39 crore and kids woolen were 11.64 crore total 70 crore okay so right now what is your focus area sir the focus we, we just we want that we should grow at 20 to 25% in this financial year and going forward all segments in all segments as we are i think we are on the right track to achieve this growth rate going forward also and what's your expectation for 3 to 5 years uh, in terms of revenue growth and margin sir uh pardon uh, again again we, again we say that the, the company is basically focusing on year by year and uh, this year we have projected a growth of 20 to 25% and going forward the company is maintaining the same strategy of growing at these kind of growth rates okay thank you so much and what's your expectation on margin uh, so we were seeing our margins you know uh, of last year margins okay and i think the inflation pressure is now like high cotton prices and all input cost is behind us we can assume that right sir yes cotton prices have come down uh, from its peak but still it is 10 to 15 percent higher as compared to uh, last summer prices but we expect that this prices should remain stable or it may it might come down little you know uh, few percentages but very difficult to say uh, unless and until you know we see next two months about the cotton crop and demand of cotton yarn one last question sir do we have the break up of online and retail sales like oh, right now what is the online sales contribute to total sales the last year it contributed around uh, 6 to 7% as compared to the total total overall revenue of the company okay. and going forward we'll maintain this kind of uh, share in the online sales okay so last by last year you mean uh, fy 20 right march 31st 20 Financial thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. You guys have done great job. Thank you, and best wishes. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for the day. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, Novati, you sir. Thank you very much for all the participants. And uh, if there is any question which remains unanswered, or if there is any query which you want to have. you can definitely mail us at our monte carlo corporate.com or dickerson world our investment advisor thank you very much thank you on behalf of M- mk global financial services that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect